everybody welcome back to my classes taken by zoom and uh, placed on YouTube for your perusal tonight or not tonight today we're going to do winter warmers and as the weather becomes a bit more inclement we are going to have delicious warming comforting food to get you through the season going to start our Thai chicken pie so in my wok I have some sunflower oil which I'm heating up and into that I'm going to add five to six tablespoons of this red curry paste three four five I think that's quite enough okay and what's nice about uh look it around a bit What's nice about um, Thai um, spices is that you can buy these from Woolies and you just use one per curry so that you don't have to have a jar in your fridge for the next year until you make the pie again. So these little sachets from Woolies are the route to go, okay? And into that, we are going to add some garlic, some crushed ginger, I love, and some grated lemongrass, which has got such a wonderful fragrance. So we're going to stir, 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 and when you stir this, just like last week I told you with the Indian, when you stir spices in heat, in oil, they, if they release their own flavouring oils, and the this is, creates the base, the foundations of the actual curry. Okay. Then, once that's nice and fragrant, which you can't smell, but I can, it smells absolutely delicious. Then we are going to add our other ingredients. So here is, see, my coconut milk. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> the chili is going up your nose. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, that's that. And then into that we are going to add these unbelievably fragrant lime leaves which I'm just going to go like this just to break the cuticle of the of the outside of the actual leaf it's got a waxy cuticle or covering these lime leaves make such a difference they're like curry leaves to a um, Indian curry they make the world of difference so in there goes a drop of fish sauce. Now if you are phobic about fish sauce and if you are phobic about um, anchovies, you can just use salt as a, a um, replacement for the fish sauce. Okay. And then into that I'm going to put a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt. And a little bit of coriander and I'm going to let that cook up a bit along with some chicken stock okay cook 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 push this bit go just switch it off yeah I keep on going the wrong way okay so here is this wonderfully fragrant curry and actually in Thai cooking which is extremely simple you make this as a base and you can add any any protein to it you can add prawns you can add pieces of salmon you can add lamb pieces you can add beef you can add chicken like we're doing and it is a wonderful very flavorful sauce and we are vegetarian at home so what I do is I just grill a whole lot of vegetables and then I add them in at the last minute 
and then that's our wonderful Thai curry with with salt with uh, rice. So let me taste this. Wash taste it. Mm, heat salt. Mm, God, it's delicious. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more curry paste because it's not hot enough to my liking. A little bit of salt. And then what I've done is I have sliced chicken breasts into slices, which I'm gonna put in in this second. Okay, let's do it with that, a bit more civilized. What you work off with in terms of quantities for pies, I'd say like one chicken breast per person. How's that, Porsche? Yeah. Is it boiling? Yeah. Okay, that can be the end of that. And then what I've got to add to it are some green beans which I've topped and tailed and cut in half. So the green beans go in raw and then obviously the coconut milk is going to cook them. And I have got some butternut that I've already roasted because it takes too long otherwise. And we are going to add that in at the last minute before we put it in the in the um, no, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, okay, let me cover it. I'm actually going to add it into my dish right now and just pour everything on top. Okay. That'll be the most sensible thing to do. So here's my wonderful roasted butternut, which you roast at 180 for about 30, uh, for about 40 minutes with a little bit of oil on. I put sunflower oil this time because we're making an Asian dish and a little bit of salt and pepper. And then that is that. So we're just going to wait for the chicken to cook through and then what we're going to do is you're going to get some puff pastry now I've been telling all my clients that the best puff pastry comes from Thrupps because there's a fantastic baker there who makes it fresh every morning so here is this butter puff and I need this one as well. It's in fact cheaper than the other makes that you can buy. And it is fresh and it really puffs up beautifully. How are my things going there, Porsche? Beautiful. Now, what you'll find with a Thai curry is that because it's got stock and coconut milk in it, it's a little bit um, watery. Because Thai curries are watery as opposed to unctuous. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, we're gonna cook that all down. I'm going to put a little bit of Mazina, which is here, into a dish. Just to slightly thicken the sauce. So here's some mazzino and I'm going to put a drop of the curry milk inside it to make a paste before I add it in. Okay. I'm going to make this paste. I don't know whether I wrote that on the, on the recipe, but if I didn't, you can all write it now. I have sent you all the hard copies. So I'm gonna put this in. We don't want it to be too thick, but we definitely don't want it to be too watery either. 
So let's just see how that goes, how it thickens up. And if it thickens up adequately, then we can much thicker so you can see I haven't got cubed chicken um, pieces I've got long uh, strips I prefer chicken strips and um, I just wanted to get a little bit thicker Porsche Shall I give it one more one more oh, dot oh, oh. one more dot okay I'm gonna give one more bit just so that it's more anxious than watery and then what you do you just add the chicken milk you've got to understand that every time you make the same dish it's different uh, it's got different energy from you it's got oh that's all over me um, it's okay thank you it's got um, different ingredients in terms of okay that's fine thanks Porsche out all the lumps and bumps okay and that goes in Asia they've got those mini um, aubergines those little aubergine balls which are adorable but unfortunately we haven't got them here and I've actually never seen them anywhere but already I can see that the sauce is becoming less watery and more much thicker obviously as you heat it so it thickens okay right so let's just put this over for a minute okay so now i'm going to just splash over some scatter over some delicious coriander and i'm going to take my thai curry and we are going to pour it carefully into our casserole dish what's so nice about this is that you can make it the day before how perfect does this look okay Small yeah, casserole, casserole dishes, anyway. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, mm -hmm. give that to me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of the sauce out because we should have used a slightly bigger casserole dish. But we're really halfway to finishing it, so it's just huh? Am I busy here? Bringing me abundance. Okay. All right. So that's that. So here's our wonderful pastry from from Frups. I'm going to put a scattering of flour on the bottom, and I'm going to This is one kilo and it could actually probably cover two smallish casserole dishes there's so much um, it's now I've got leaves on it <laughs> okay um, so what I'm going to do Okay, and then what I'm going to do very gently is Fold it on top of the edge of the casserole dish, and I'm gonna 
brush it down with a fork to make it look a bit attractive, you know? Okay, and this is forks coming out. It's coming a little bit unstuck in the corner. No cause for alarm. A few little holes. And then I've got a beaten egg. To brush on top of the pastry so that it becomes beautiful and golden. So that can go into an oven, 180 for 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how hot your 180 oven is, until the um, pastry is beautifully golden and puffed up. And just remember the inside's cooked, so it's just the pastry. So that's gonna go into the oven. And then the next thing we're going to do is our South African special babuti. So now we're going to do our babuti with raisin turmeric rice. It's got quite a long list of ingredients because obviously Malay food is very flavorful and so it's got lots of different layers of flavoring. And, um, but also, just like the fish pie and the Thai chicken pie, this can be made in advance and just heat it up or cooked just before you are going to serve it. So for this recipe, what we're going to do, we're going to place the meat in our pan with a little bit of oil. Some grated onions, we wait for it to get a bit hotter. Okay, it's not on, is it? Okay, and into that we're going to add the onion. Garlic. I cheated and bought it from Willie's. And our mints. I just want to just get this cooked up a bit first. A little bit of salt. And then we're going to add the meat in. But let me, what I'm going to do first, I'm actually going to add the um, spices before we add the meat. So into here, we're going to add four teaspoons of our medium curry powder. I just use Rajas medium. Okay, so it's four teaspoons, it'll be two tablespoons. A bit extra. And then you have a little bit extra. Okay, then some garam masala, which is a mixed spice mixture. Then we are going to add some turmeric, a little bit of colour, half a teaspoon. Then we're going to add some ground coriander. Then we are going to add a little pinch of chilli powder. Is this a pinch? That's a pinch. Okay. So, We've used all of those spices that can go over there. And now let's fire this up. Oh, now we're talking. Now it's making a noise. Okay, so let's all the spices release their oils and their flavor. And then into that, I'm going to add a little bit of dried herbs. And it smells so delicious, I cannot tell you. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to uh, add the meat now, portion. Okay, 
here's our lean mince, extra lean mince. Salt. And what I'm going to do, I've actually got some fresh ginger here, so I'm just going to add it because it's right in front of me, and some chives because I've had them for another dish. So if you've got fresh ginger grated and some extra chives or coriander or parsley, just add it in because it's, it's going to add flavour to the dish in any event. Okay. And obviously to make your rice turmeric -y, you just obviously boil it and then you um, add through a tablespoon of rice, uh, of turmeric powder, or you can put turmeric uh, in the water and then your rice comes out yellow. And then just plump up your raisins in a little bit of hot water get a little bowl and put some raisins in that you're going to add to your rice um, and pour hot water over them so they become plump and, and luscious and then um, you can put them into your rice and I always like to add a little bit of coriander as well so here is our mixture our babuti mixture the reason I haven't added um, the raisins to the mince mixture is because a lot of people don't really like fruit in um, savoury food. So I, um, I put them in, put it in the rice, put them in the rice. So if you don't like them, you can just take them out if you want to. Okay. So we're just going to let this cook down until it gets all nice and crumbly. And then we're going to add our grated carrot and our red pepper. Our brown bread, which we have soaked in half a cup of milk, just to give us a little bit of nice substance. Just breaking it apart. So this is the brown bread. You cut off the crusts, and um, okay, so that's that. Brown bread, our salt, our cinnamon, and then we've got our flavorants, which is chutney. Mrs. Balls, our famous South African chutney. A little bit of sugar and vinegar for my ever-present salt and uh, sweet and sour flavorings, and some apricot jam how oh you see this is looking good mm. it's going to be all crumbly it's now nearly all crumbly mm -hmm. now what we're going to do obviously the carrots and the red peppers are going to release some, uh, some liquid into this mixture but we've added we've added um, a little bit of stock which we will add on the side we'll add it as we need it okay so now two large carrots peeled one carrot two carrots okay so mix that in We're going to add our red peppers, which we've finely diced. And then into that, we are going to add a little bit of cinnamon. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh, salt um, bread and milk mixture a 
little bit of stock. Some chutney. Two tablespoons of chutney. Whoops! More like a thousand tablespoons of chutney. A little bit of vinegar. Just some normal spirit vinegar. And a little bit of sugar. And some apricot jam. So it has a real sweet and sour flavour. Oh doesn't that look delicious? Mm. Mm -hmm. so we're going to cook it down a little bit. We don't want it to be too dry, obviously. Do you want to taste that Porsche? I don't eat meat, so Porsche is my taster. What should we add? Very nice. Do I have to add anything? No. Okay, so let's just cook it so that these carrots and the red peppers cook down. The bees are going for my vinegar. And then, you're just going to let that cook down a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just chop some cashews for the topping. Break them down a little bit before I chop them. A little bit of salt. Okay. Add our chippers in. So I'm quickly just chop these a little bit more finely. I just want the red peppers to be a bit more cooked. Mm. Now carrots, because they're grated, cook very, very quickly. So though, those I'm not worried about. It's just the red peppers. You're loving it, eh, Porsche? Mm. <laughs> mm. Delish. Delish. Right, so what's so nice is that it's, this is a truly South African dish from our wonderful Malay heritage. And they actually brought wonderful spices into the Cape cuisine when they all immigrated to South Africa. So we have these dishes, babuti and tomato breedy and all those very fragrant, slightly um, spicy dishes. Okay, so here are my beautiful cashews. And then we're going to make the topping. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our dish. Do you want to do it in this one? Yeah. Okay. It's too small. It's too small. Okay. All right. Okay, so it's cooking beautifully. Here is our casserole dish. Okay, Pushy, do you want to put it in there? Okay, perfect. Smooth down. The topping. So that it's flat. Let that get a bit cool. And then what we're going to do, let's put it here. We're going to make the topping. So for the topping, let's let it rest a bit. Um, 
I'm going to add um, the topping ingredients, which are eggs. Some salt, a pinch of turmeric, a wonderful color of turmeric, some sour cream, Taste the cinnamon in the meat, Porsche. Yes. Porsche is my official meat um, taster because I actually haven't eaten meat since I was 18, which, as you might realize, is one hell of a long time ago. I do eat chicken and fish, but I don't eat red meat. And in fact, the last thing I stopped eating was um, mince. I used to love mince. Anyway, so let me just beat this. In the smallest dish imaginable. Okay, it's getting there. Okay. Just give it another tiny little pinch of that. Into that, I'm going to put my chopped cashews. And some bay leaves. And I'm now going to pour this wonderful mixture over my meat. How perfect does this look? Oops, a bit high. And then we are going to bake it in our oven until the egg is set. And there's our wonderful babuti pie. There's all the wonderful bay leaves also set into the, the egg mixture. So that is our babuti pie eaten with raisin and turmeric rice. So now we are going to do two wonderful soups. And I always find that in winter, a soup really warms the cockles of your heart, and it is quick and easy to make, as is this one. Now, celeriac is a vegetable that is obviously available in winter, and I am going to show you uh, what it looks like when Porsche brings me the real thing. Now, the celeriac, Porsche? Yes. That funny, yes. knobbly-looking um, vegetable. And this is, it's got a mild taste, almost like a potato, and it is a very, very nice, um, different let me show you this is <laughs> right this is in two parts okay so it comes like that so it's, I think it's part of the celery family because they've got exactly the same leaves and it's 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 a starchy extremely unattractive uh, vegetable but not all vegetables can be beautiful and this one didn't win the beauty contest. Right, so that's that. So now into this, I'm going to put my olive oil and I am going to fry my onions, which are the base of every soup.
one onion chopped. And into that, I'm going to put a few bay leaves and some thyme leaves to flavor the oil. And a splash of salt so that they don't stick. Should we put a bit more onion? Yeah. Just put a little bit more onion. Very big onion. Okay. Right. So, what's wonderful about this celeriac soup is that first of all it is seasonal because you can only get celeriac now. So that's nice. It's something to look forward to in winter. The other thing is that it, got, it has truffle oil in the recipe and I am obsessed with truffles and truffle oil. And you put truffle oil in the recipe and then you drizzle it on top with your hazelnuts and your sprinkles, whatever you're going to make. Your chopped parsley or your chopped chives. Okay, so let that get browned. And obviously this caramelization stage of the soup just like with every dish is very very important you've got to let the sweetness ooze out of the uh, of the um, onions into the oil and obviously when we're uh, stirring this around with bay leaves i can really smell the bay the bay leaves and the um thyme those two herbs flavors infuse into the onions as well so it's, it really makes a delicious base for the soup. I'm not going to add the garlic yet because garlic cooks very, very quickly. So, oh, super, a little leaf from up top. A little bit of fauna and flora popping into our soup. Um, what's nice is that, um, you must always remember with all dishes, is that you first cook the onions, then you add the garlic. Once the onions are cooked, then you add the garlic because the onions take a lot longer to cook than the garlic. And if you don't do it one at a time, then what happens is um, your garlic gets burnt. So now it's starting to really cook beautifully. And then I've cubed my um, celeriac and I've cubed my potatoes. So what you're going to do is once we've added in the garlic, we're going to add these two vegetables with a little bit of salt and pepper and then we are going to add our stock now there are obviously all different types of stocks available um, I personally like the cartons of fresh stock from Woolies because they haven't got MSG ABC DEF in them whatever poison is available and um, they are pure and organic so those are the best one to use or you can use, I, I sometimes use the awesome one from Israel. That's a nice one to use as well. Very flavorful. How's that going, Porsche? Coming. Coming. Okay. And um, it's like having a facial here with all the steam in my face. And <laughs> we are steaming. Are we steaming? <laughs> right. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit more salt. Nothing like a bit of flavor. And I'm going to add a little bit of garlic to the equation as well. Okay. Very flavorful base of the soup. And then we're going to add the potatoes and the um, celeriac. Let it get a little bit uh, caramelized also before the stock goes in. Okay, so let's add this in. Now what I did with the celeriac, guys, is I actually cut it yesterday and just like with potatoes if you cut all potatoes or even in fact even apples and pears but I'm talking about potatoes and celeriac at the moment and sweet pea, sweet potato is that you need um, if you're gonna cook uh, cook it the next day and you're cutting it the day before having a bit of flora and flora once again um, then just leave it in a bowl of bicarbonated water because that will stop it um, going brown. So that's what we did last night and we can add the potatoes in. Okay. 
and let's mix that around pushy. So what we're going to do, we're going to cook it in with the stock, with those whole herbs in there, the bay leaves and the thyme uh, sprigs. But when we blitz it in our blender, we obviously are going to take out the thyme and the, and the bay leaves. And obviously add the cream and our truffle oil. So, I'm now going to add my stock. Okay. I don't like all those dehydrated vegetables. But as I say to you, the, the, the plain stock from, um, what's wrong, Porsche? It does the splash. Oh, yeah, splash. Um, as I say, the, the plain uh, organic stock from Woolies is absolutely perfect. You probably have to add a little bit more seasoning, but let that uh, boil up, and then um, we are going to start with the next soup, which is a meal in its Self. It's a creamy mushroom, chicken, and wild rice soup. Okay, guys, so now we're going to do our last soup of the day our creamy mushroom, chicken, and wild rice soup, which is, as I said to you, a meal on its own, very, very nutritious and extremely flavorful. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start off by charging up the engines. Off you go. All right, and we're going to add a little bit of butter. And we are going to fry down our onions. And our carrots and our celery. I've already fried my mushrooms. Here they are. And I've set them aside. Okay. So then we're going to wait for this to get um, melted. And then we're going to add our onion and our celery and our carrot, which I've diced into very small pieces. Now, this um, recipe calls for wild rice, but the wild rice are these black, um, these black bits of rice in this mixture. Today, I couldn't find wild rice. I don't know why, but all of a sudden, it doesn't exist in South Africa. So, I'm using a mixture of wild rice normal rice and lentils which will be just as nice okay so in go my carrots then after that oh my goodness let's say that that's two carrots diced and then two stalks of celery dust. Okay. I leave it off. Okay. So what we're cooking in here is actually called a mulepois which is um, the basis of most dishes, or in Italy you call it a sofrito. It's onion, carrot, and celery. And then once it's cooked down, we're going to add a little bit of garlic, because obviously these take a little bit of time to cook. Okay, let's put the lid on, and then the heat will stay in as it belongs, okay? So, you've done the mushrooms, there they are, and we are going to uh, cook this down until they're soft and tender, and then we're going to add our garlic and thyme. Okay, then we're going to add our stock, our rice, our chicken and mushrooms, and we're going to boil, let it boil, and then you, that's what you do with the soup, you let it boil and then you switch it down to low and you let it cook slowly until the rice is cooked because the chicken's cooked and the um, 
everything else will be cooked and the mushrooms are cooked. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to add my cream or milk and some Parmesan cheese. And I'm going to add a little bit of um, chopped parsley or chives on top. And that is a wonderful meal for a cold winter's day with everything in it. How's this going, Porsche? Boiling. Boiling, that's what we want. That's exactly what we want. So the celeriac soup is cooking down beautifully. It's very fragrant with the bay leaves and the um, mixture in, with the bay leaves and the thyme. I'm just waiting for this to get going. And then, can we just heat it? Oh, is it, is it high? Hi. It is high. Okay. So these are starting to release a little bit of moisture, which means that they're cooking. Come on, little darling, get soft. And then we'll add everything else. So what I've done, guys, is I've taken the um, thyme and the bay leaves out of this um, pot. And I've put it into my blender, which I think we may have overfilled. Let me we'll, take it out. We will soon find out when it, it out. flies in our face. Let's just go like this. Hold on. Oopsie. Yeah. Okay. What's going on? This is a disaster. Anyway, no cause for alarm. <laughs> So let me just have a little look. Perfect. Let me taste it. Mm. Mm. So divine. Mm. Delicious. So into that. We're going to put our truffle oil and our cream and then we're going to drizzle it on top which I will show you later. Okay, where's our little thing? The truffle oil is obviously going to make it. Okay, this is, we'll be quite careful with the steam. Otherwise it can blow off. Okay, here's another pot. Oh my God. This is a broken hand of mine. Okay, here we go. So here goes some of the liquid. And now I'm going to add a bit more. Horsey wash. Do you want to just help me here? In the meantime, our other chicken stock is soup is cooking perfectly. Okay. Let's taste this. Wonderful. Mm. Chocolate oil makes such a difference. Let me just put, uh, open the little khati there. <laughs> Some truffle oil in. Let's not slow down on the truffle. I love it. Salt. And this also gets a bit of cream. 100 ml of cream. Okay, so now, guys, going back to our chicken and mushroom soup, I'm going to put a little bit of cream in, cream or milk, whichever you prefer, and a handful of parmesan. And basically, we've made the most 
delicious soup ever. I'm going to add some chives onto the top and some more parmesan when we serve it. And I'm going to take out my um, Thai thyme leaves. But this soup is beyond. I'm sure I put in two thyme leaves. I can't see with all the steam. But look how quick that is. And Can you see how delicious that looks? Okay, Porsche, put it in here, please. See, the other one's much better. Okay. So what we can do is you can bring these back to the other side, guys, and we're going to photograph the food inside the studio with a little walk through the vegetable garden. Come into my kitchen and look at the end results. Here we have our wonderful Thai chicken pie, our delicious fish pie with the melted oozing cheddar cheese on top, our wonderful babuti, and here we've got our celeriac soup with truffle drizzle and some chopped uh, hazelnuts. And here we have our chicken and mushroom soup, which I've um, put in a little um, sprinkling of parmesan on top. So everybody, that is our lesson for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Winter warmers. And next week we're going to do Italian. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.